Dan just read the text that is found in Romans 4.13. As we delve into this, the promise and the heirship of the world, it's not through the law, but through the righteousness of faith, I'd like to back up and start in Genesis and refresh your minds on things you already know. When the Lord gave to Adam, an introduction to the Garden of Eden, the one negative command was connected to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that that fruit was not to be eaten, or that in the day that you eat of it, he was told, you shall surely die. Genesis chapter 5 tells us that Adam was 930 years old when he died physically, but also if we look at chapter 3, we can understand that Adam and Eve both died on the day that they ate of that fruit. Yeah. That is revealed in the fact that they're hiding from God. No other people are around. They're husband and wife, but they are ashamed of being naked. Mm -hmm. And when God calls them to account, Adam blames Eve, and Eve blames the serpent, and all of those are symptoms of their broken relationship with God, which is the essence of the death that occurred, uh -huh. and of which the physical death that happened 930 years later in Abraham's case, it too was a symptom of that broken relationship with God. When God first created, death had no part in that. He gave them life, of which there was a physical aspect to it, and then there was a relationship with him, but their disobedience brought death. Romans chapter 3 looks at this issue of disobedience and death, and it establishes clearly that all of the, that are of the seed of Adam have sinned and therefore have died. Verse 4, God forbid, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy saves, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Dropping down to verse 9. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Dropping down to verse 19. Now we know that what the things soever the law saith, it saith to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But not now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, verse 23 there is a summary verse. And... Paul is drawing on the 14th Psalm and expounding on it and seven, at least seven times. He is making it clear that every person who is descended from Adam is a rebel sinner against God. And if we go over to chapter 6, verse 23, many of you have that memorized, it's clear that the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. That is the outcome of it. 
Now, I'd also like to make clear that Luke chapter 3, the end of the chapter that traces Jesus' genealogy backwards to Adam, does not mean that Jesus is physically descended from Adam. A clear, careful reading makes it clear that Joseph is not really his father. But the purpose of that genealogy is to show that the announcement of the angels of peace toward men is for all the descendants of, it's available to all the descendants of Adam. Gabriel made it very clear in his speaking to Mary, in making that announcement of the child to be born to her, that he would be called the Son of God and that he would be conceived by the power of the Holy Ghost. So there's a miracle birth there to a woman who is a virgin. Those things are necessary to keep in our minds as we begin to think about the promise and heirship of the world which was first made to Abraham and then subsequently to those who are believers in Jesus the Christ. Receiving the promise and heirship of the world is only possible in the way that the Lord is offering it. Romans 4 has much to say about this and the verses that lead up to my text in verse 13 are very helpful in understanding the way in which God makes it possible for those who believe in his Son to be heirs of the world. Beginning at Romans 4.3 For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom the Lord imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven mm -hmm. and whose sins are covered. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now I'd like to draw on verses 6, 7, and 8. Those verses make four statements about the blessedness that God establishes. Mm -hmm. First, blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputes righteousness without works. Second, Blessed are they, implying not men only, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven. Mm -hmm. Third, blessed are they whose sins are covered. Mm -hmm. Fourth, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Amen. Now, implied in those four blessing statements are the opposites. Cursed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute righteousness. Mm -hmm. Cursed are they whose iniquities are not forgiven. Amen. Cursed are they whose sins are not covered. And finally, cursed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute who will. Cursed is the man to whom the Lord will impute sin. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So if we summarize those four statements and their opposites, there is the possibility of righteousness being imputed, and there is the possibility of it not being imputed. There's the possibility of sin being imputed, and there's the possibility of sin not being imputed. Continuing in verse 9. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Mm -hmm. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or uncircumcision? Mm -hmm. Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Mm -hmm. And he received the sign of the circumcision, the seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had, being yet uncircumcised. Some have already made that point this evening, that it was a sign and a seal uh -huh. of what God mm -hmm. had given to him that he might be the father of all them that believe. 
though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. So circumcision is called sign and it's called a seal mm -hmm. of the righteousness of the faith he had before being physically circumcised. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, that is the Jewish people, mm -hmm and those associated with, closely with them, but who also walked in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. Mm -hmm. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, mm -hmm. but through the righteousness of faith. Amen. So, Genesis 15 tells us this incident where the Lord speaks to Abraham one night. There's no big city near it. Now we've got all these lights. You can't see the stars so clearly. But at that time, no nighttime light from, of significance from people. And he said, if you can count the stars, mm -hmm. you can count your seed. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now he's an older man. Neither he or his wife haven't been able to have children. He believes the promise, and God counts his believing mm -hmm. to him for righteousness. Amen. 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 Believing and righteousness aren't the same thing, but God marked it down to him, as it were, on the record books as righteousness. Paul quotes from Genesis 15 in chapter 4 where he is reasoning about our justification before God by faith and where he discusses circumcision. I'd like to direct your minds to some pertinent facts about circumcision. I listed out 11 that I thought were significant in this discussion. First, the covenant of circumcision was given to Abraham and to his seed and for the stranger in his house who is not of his seed. Mm -hmm. That's in Genesis 17. Secondly, circumcision is included in the law for the Jews and for the strangers living with them. In Exodus 12, which tells us about the Passover sacrifice, it's very clear that only the circumcised are to partake of the man, to partake of the circumcision meal. It's very interesting. That's Exodus 12. If you go to Leviticus 12, there circumcision is specified in the law. Mm -hmm. That is to be on the eighth day. Same as for Abraham and the covenant of the promise before the giving of the law. Third, circumcision was an issue of the heart. It's shown in Deuteronomy 10, Deuteronomy 30, Jeremiah 4, chapter 9, and also in Romans 2. Every one of them make that point. I'd like to read two of them, the two passages in Deuteronomy. Circumcise Chapter 10, verse 16 says, Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff-necked. That's a command, establishing that the Jews were responsible to circumcise their hearts to the Lord. In chapter 30, verse 6, And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. And so in this passage, the Lord is taking responsibility for circumcising the hearts of his people to himself. And taken together, it shows us that there's a responsibility on the part of the man, the person or woman, to circumcise their hearts to God. And then on the other side of it, God says he will do it. The implication and the teaching, the clear teaching from Scripture is we can't do this by our own power. Mm -hmm. But there's the implication we have to yield ourselves to Him and allow Him to do it. Mm -hmm. 
We have much the same thing in the New Covenant because there we are told to sanctify ourselves, 2 Corinthians 7, 1 for one example. Yeah. Therefore, having these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Mm -hmm. And then in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14, it tells us of Christ, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. And likewise, before he goes to the cross, John 17, he prays to the Father, sanctify them through the truth, thy word is truth. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, New Covenant, Old Covenant, we have the same thing where God says he will do it, but then he also calls us to do it. Mm -hmm. So he's the one who empowers us. Mm -hmm. Amen. We have none, no power of our own. And inasmuch as it is an issue of the heart, it becomes clear that it is not just the man. The women are included. Fourth, in this series of pertinent, and final one, sorry, I said 11. That comes in the next point. For the fourth and final item of a pertinent fact related to circumcision, thinking this through, the new covenant in Christ makes provision for both Jews and Gentiles to be saved. Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to, the, to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Mm -hmm. And so we have in, in God giving the promise and the covenant of circumcision to Abraham for his seed and for those who live with him. Same thing specified in the law for the Jews and for those who come into the faith of the Jews. And now in the new covenant to both Jew and non-Jew. The heading over which I had 11 points is a timeline of pertinent facts or events related to circumcision. The way this played out. First, Genesis 15, 6 is the record mentioned before. Abraham believes God's promise. It's counted to him for righteousness. He can count the stars. He can count his seed. He couldn't do either one. Second, that's chapter 15. Chapter 16 of Genesis tells us that he was 86 years old when Ishmael was born. Third, Genesis 17 the chapter about circumcision. He's 99 at that point. Fourth, Galatians 3.17 tells us that the giving of the law happened or came 430 years after the giving of the promise to Abraham and his seed. Fifth, the day of Pentecost, recorded in Acts 2, is the day in which the Holy Ghost is poured out on the Jewish believers in Jesus. Sixth, Acts chapter 10 records the outpouring of the Holy Ghost on Cornelius, his family, and his friends and kinsmen who were gathered in the house, and the scripture tells us there was a large number there. He is described in Acts 10, as a devout man, he's one that feared God with all his house, and none of them were circumcised. They're Gentile believers, but the Holy Spirit is poured out on them. Seventh, Acts 11 records the Jews in Jerusalem taking issue with Peter for having eaten a meal in Cornelius' house with the uncircumcised, and then they quiet down when he explains, well, Holy Ghost came on them, and who was I to resist God? And they say, then they, they make the conclusion, those people, well, then God has granted salvation to the Gentiles. They don't further push him on that. Number eight. Acts 15 tells us that the Judaizers arrive in Antioch and they start teaching 
you Gentile people who have believed in Jesus need to be circumcised after the custom of Moses. And they go a little further, except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Ninth, Acts 15 then goes on to record what we call the Jerusalem Council that considered this issue of circumcision as it related to the Gentiles who were coming to faith in Jesus. And within that council, Peter recalls that a few years back, at Cornelius' home, the Lord poured out the Holy Ghost on the uncircumcised Gentiles. In verse 8 of 15, Peter's words, And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Amen. Now, in my teen years, I had the misunderstanding that Jesus and the Christian faith did not apply to Jews. They were in a different category. And we see here that some in the early church had a fundamental misunderstanding in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. That they thought that the Gentiles who came to believe in Jesus had to become Jewish in circumcision before they could be saved. And the Holy Spirit, speaking through the scriptures and the apostles, looking at both scripture and at what happened in Cornelius' home, say a loud, emphatic no to that idea. Tenth, a few years after the Jerusalem Council, Paul writes to the Galatian churches, and he shows in chapters 3 and 4 there that insistence on circumcision nullified the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. Eleventh, and the final point under this, um, in this timeline, appears that a few years after that, he writes to the believers in Rome. And in that letter, he points out that righteousness was imputed to Abraham on the basis of his faith. Yeah. I'd like to pick up some of the verses from Galatians that discuss this. Chapter 3, verse 13 says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, mm -hmm. being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, mm -hmm. that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. Then in chapter 5, verse 2, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Mm -hmm. Same chapter, verse 11. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. Mm -hmm. and so from those verses in Galatians, it's clear that first, faith in Christ redeems us from the curse of the law. Second, the blessings promised to Abraham by faith come to Gentiles through faith in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. just as they do for the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. Third, that to receive circumcision as a requirement is to lose the blessings of being in Christ. And fourth, to receive circumcision is to remove the offense of the cross. Offense connected to the cross of Christ. Now, no one no Christian, no non-Christian receives from God both the imputation of sin and the imputation of righteousness. Everyone receives imputation of one or the other, but they are opposites. The imputation of sin results in the wrath of God being poured out for eternity, whereas the imputation of righteousness results in the blessing and the mercy and the goodness of God being poured out Amen. on that person for eternity. Now, Romans 3 makes very clear that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everybody, believer or unbeliever, is under this same 
situation so that no one is going to be able, none of us are going to be able to stand on the day of judgment and say, I never broke one of your commands. That's right. You can't do it. But those who have their confidence in Jesus look to God on his, because of him for mercy. Colossians chapter 2 makes the same point in this. In order to give the context, I'll start with verse 6 and then drop down to verse 10. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Verse 10. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened, that is made alive, together with him, having forgiven you all trespass, trespasses blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. From this, we can say that believers in Jesus are, one, they are complete in him. Two, they are circumcised in the circumcision made without hands. That is, they are set apart for God in Christ. Mm -hmm. Third, in Christ the body of our sins is put off. Circumcision is a cutting off, and the body of our sins are cut off. Fourth, believers in Jesus are made alive in Him. Fifth, believers in Jesus have their trespasses forgiven. God pictures that forgiveness in the Psalms in this way, in a logical dilemma that none of us can fathom. Let's see here. As far as the east is from the west, mm -hmm. so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Yeah. There's nobody here, not me, not any of you, who can tell you, tell any of us, how, how far is that? It's opposite directions. and. As far as we know, an infinite direction. We have another picture in Micah 7, 19. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. Amen. And now will cast all of their sins into the depths of the sea. Amen. God delights in giving us visual pictures to mm -hmm. describe what he does. Sixth in this list. Believers in Jesus are without the handwriting of ordinances against them because Christ took it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. And seventh and the final point, they are set free from the principalities and powers which were defeated by Christ and are against us. Now, none of those blessings are available to people who have sin imputed to them. That's right. Blessing and cursing are opposites. Which brings us to the main text, Romans 4.13. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, mm -hmm. but through the righteousness of faith. So, just as for Abraham, believing God's promise was counted to him for righteousness, the same for the believers today. Mm -hmm. God works, somebody already pointed out, God's impartial, be consistent with the way he works with all of us. So, those who believe in Christ, the, the, the text says, 
that the promise was not to Abraham or to his seed. Well, Galatians points out that Christ is that seed. Mm -hmm. So, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So, God revealed that, that that promise specifically pointed to his son. So, based on that, those people, Judaizers, who showed up in Antioch and all the others, were missing the point that Jesus was the fulfillment of both the promises that had been made to Abraham and to his seed, that he is the fulfillment of the law, or he keeps it perfectly for us, because the law shows us our sin, that we don't measure up to the standards of God, and that those who are wanting to be under the law are rejecting the mercy God is offering in his son. They're missing that point. Airship. I picked up some verses in the New Testament that talk about that, but Others have already talked about this, that we're, God's way is to put believers in Christ. Mm -hmm. And in Christ is a common, significant phrase in the New Testament. There are those who think it's the key to understanding the whole of the New Covenant, that we are in Him. But when we believe in Jesus, God puts us in His Son, the Son in whom He is well pleased. Mm -hmm. That's our... Mm -hmm. protection and safety and he makes us co-heirs with his son Jesus Amen. Mm -hmm. so some of those passages that talk about that Romans 4.14 for if they which are of the law be heirs mm -hmm. faith is made void and the promise made of none effect because the law demands perfect obedience none of us obey it perfectly it reveals instead our sin. To receive an inheritance through our efforts at, at obedience, which are imperfect, does away with the fates and the promises that God has made. Romans 8 tells us that people become sons of God by the spirit of adoption. That is, the Holy Spirit who makes people the sons of God, new creatures in Jesus when they believe. The 17th verse of Romans 8 says, And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So being a joint heir with Christ means that what he inherits, we inherit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Hebrews 11, not 11, Hebrews 1, verse 2, says of Christ, God hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, Amen. by whom also he made the world. So, he makes those who believe in him heir of all things, things eternal, the, mm -hmm. the great value, mm -hmm. valuable things which God has, he allows his children by faith to inherit. Praise God. Amen. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Mm -hmm. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, ye are sanctified, ye are justified in the name of our Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Mm -hmm. So that living in sin will cut you off from Almighty God, but there's forgiveness available, and when there's that forgiveness, then there's the power to break. He breaks the power of canceled sin, says in one of the hymns. Mm -hmm.
1 Corinthians 15, 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. It takes a spiritual birth to come into the kingdom. Galatians 3, 29. If ye be Christ, then ye are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Mm -hmm. It's necessary to belong to Christ to be an heir of the promise made to Abraham and to his seed. Mm -hmm. Because the seed is Christ. Titus 3, verse 7. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope mm -hmm. of eternal life. Mm -hmm. So, even our hope is something called an inheritance. Returning to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, speaking of the angels, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation? Chapter 6 is a warning to us that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So being an heir of God with all the things he gives us is not inviting laziness or sloth. That's right. It's not okay and it's not even possible to be lazy and slothful if you desire to inherit with Christ what he inherits. Rather, we're called to be patient, to continue in the faith, to be diligently seeking the God who made us, to bear up under sorrows when suffering unjustly, to bear great trial and difficulty for the sake of the one who calls us. The gift is free, but the implications connected with the gift make it clear that there's still a price to be paid in the sense of continuing and following through. God gives the grace for that, but we have to receive the grace for that. James chapter 2. Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to them that love him? So, most believers are not the rich. Now, there's some who are rich. Abraham was rich. David was rich but not most of the believers. 1 Peter 3, 7. Likewise ye husbands, speaking of their wives, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Heirs together of the grace of life. We're to encourage each other in this walk of faith. Mm -hmm. And David writes in Psalm 16, The Lord is my inheritance. And in a similar vein, the Lord speaks to Abraham That's right. and says, I am your exceeding great reward. Mm -hmm. That's as good as it gets. <laughs> Amen. In his second letter, Peter writes, chapter 1, verse 3, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things, that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, mm -hmm. that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, mm -hmm. having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Amen. So, exceeding great and precious promises. As you all know, the Bible is full of promises for us to believe and, and be transformed by. Amen. Included in those promises is that we have fellowship with the God who made us. 1 John 1, 3 says, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, and our fellowship is with the Father and with Amen. his Son, Jesus Christ. To summarize the things that I have said here, the promises of God are made to Christ. He is the seed to whom the promises were made. Where it says in Galatians 3.16, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, 
and to thy seed, which is Christ. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. Mm -hmm. In other words, in Jesus, there's like a great big yes mm -hmm. in the promises of God. They're fulfilled in him, they're available in him, Amen. Through mm -hmm. faith in Jesus, we become sons and daughters of God, and as sons, then co-heirs with mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Romans 8, 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sin is not imputed mm -hmm. to those who are in Christ. Righteousness is uh -huh. imputed mm -hmm. as a gift mm -hmm. from God through faith, in his perfect son. And that is the basis of our fellowship with mm -hmm. yeah. God, Father, mm -hmm. the Son, the Holy Spirit. So the circumcision of Christ becomes our circumcision by cutting us off from fellowship with the God-rejecting world, cutting off the body of sins, mm -hmm. and bringing us into eternal fellowship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Close with the final verse from 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God 